Yo guys, what is up? Max in our first Ascendant video, and today we're going over Hotfix 1.1.5, uh, but we've also got news about the upcoming patch that's going to be happening at the end of the month that's going to bring the reactor changes and more. Hope you guys enjoy the breakdown. Let's get right into it. So for Hotfix 1.1.5, which went live today, uh, we've got a few changes. First off, they fixed or improved intermittent screen lag that was occurring while playing on 400% mode. Hopefully this helps with people's frame rates. Uh, I've heard a lot of people saying that their Xboxes and Playstations are just getting fried in 400% dungeons, especially when they're playing like Freinas or Bunnies. So let me know if this change helps. They also fixed some UI that had to do with the score multipliers kind of not updating. Um, and that is for the 400%. For ETA, they added a select all option that allows you to select all blueprints that you own more than one when selling blueprints to ETA. Um, your energy activator blueprints and crystallization catalyst blueprints can no longer be sold to ETA. And when selling blueprints to ETA, you can now only select the blueprints up to the limits of rewards you can hold. So you can't like oversell and then you just don't get any rewards for all those selling things. That, um, and now ETA will also continue to display the names of items that have been sold up. Now, I do just want to still caution you that if you're going to hit the select all button to delete all your blueprints, to make sure that there's not any duplicate blueprints that you need, because obviously if you want to build like a four out of four weapon, you need five blueprints. So just make sure that you're not selling duplicate blueprints that you still need. Um, just a little heads up there. Next up, we've got some bug fixes to invasion missions. Nothing like of super importance here. Uh, for descendants, they fixed an issue where the outgoing damage increase per bomb of creative explosion skill did not reflect correctly when using SMO's creative explosion skill module. Uh, I plan to mess around with SMO uh, either as our next build or the one after. I just finished our Eugen build. Uh, I'm getting a lot of requests for Valby, uh, and then I would like to do SMO as well. Uh, for UI UX things, they did a, a added a button where you can see the event of the like in-game banner i'm thinking this is talking about like being able to go into the like freina uh event from the game which if that's how that works that's gonna be really really nice um selecting a paint to dye your head skin or hair now highlights the descendant's head good stuff um and they fixed an issue where some text in the inventory list sorted by reactor was not displaying correctly um just some kind of like miscellaneous stuffs there um and then we've got some more miscellaneous changes they added a dismantle all tiers option to the exclude from junk filter, added a dismantle all tiers option for reactors and external components, and selecting dismantle all tiers designates all reactors and external components you own as junk. So basically, if you want to just wipe out everything, you can. Um, however, enhanced reactors and external components with set effects need to be designated separately. Good stuff there. Cash shop bundles that include descendant exclusive items now display the text. This product includes an exclusive item. Good change there. And they made some changes to the chat band word system. This was so funny. Uh, in world chat, if you open it up, which I, I, I would advise not doing, um, but there's just some ridiculous messages that are being put in world chat. But if you want to type out like a normal message to a friend or like informative something, sometimes it would just pop up like, as everything that you were trying to say was banned. But if you wanted to say something absolutely vulgar, like none of those words were banned, it was very interesting. Um, and then we get a director's comment. The director says that over the next week, the dev team will be conducting a final review process of the PS5 Pro build in order to deliver the Pro Enhanced features as a day one patch in time for the launch of the PS5 Pro. With the Pro Enhanced feature, we aim to bring you enhanced performance and visuals that could not be experienced on the original PS5. Uh, the final review of the Pro build is expected to last approximately one week. There will not be any updates next week to ensure the QA and build stability. Uh, the 1.16 update is scheduled to go live on October 30th. And then they said that they're going to comment on the upcoming update, which is on October 30th. First off, we're getting the special operations resource defense changes. We're changing the waves in resource defense to 10 stages, dramatically reducing playtime so that all waves can be completed in about 15 minutes and can be cleared even quicker as your descendant grows stronger. Um, so they're basically trying to make the like resource defenses in line with like block hyper mining. Uh, so it sounds like it'll probably take, you know, if you're fully built, probably around like 10 minutes. Uh, I guess we'll see though. Uh, previously, players had to move to monster spawn areas to find them. But with these improvements, battles will be concentrated around defense objectives. We've also increased the number of monster spawns per wave, allowing you to experience tense battles as you defend your resources against Volga's Onslaught. 
in addition to this will provide a weapon proficiency as an additional reward while maintaining the existing reward system the devs team goal is to make resource defense the most efficient weapon proficiency farm leveling your weapons right now in 400 dungeons takes about 16 minutes so if this is going to be faster than that that is going to be insane. Um, so very, very excited for this. Uh, but the real thing that we're all getting excited for is the reactor implant system. This is coming October 30th. It has now been confirmed. We have a date. Um, and let's read this. The dev team has been working on the reactor implant uh, system to eliminate the inconvenience of having to farm a new reactor every time you switch to a new weapon. Now, one ultimate reactor can have up to three weapon optimization conditions. This allows you to change weapons during combat and still maintain your optimization conditions. Also, the second and third optimization conditions can be changed at any time, giving you the freedom to apply the optimization conditions you want whenever your weapon settings change. So it doesn't sound like, you know, it's going to be very hard to add new weapons. Uh, if you're using one weapon and want to switch, you can just like change it. Sounds pretty freely. Uh, I'm guessing that this means that there isn't like a long crafting cost or something like that to do this if they're saying that you can change it freely. Um, so that's really awesome. Uh, and the dev team is constantly reviewing feedback and data on the reactor system and reactor farming and looking to bring you a more improved reactor system in the long term. So please stay tuned. They said that they're reviewing feedback for the reactor system. So I just wanted to give some real quick. Um, this sounds fantastic. Uh, I'm hoping this means that we can put on a sniper, an SMG, and an LMG as optimization conditions and use our favorite weapons uh, pretty freely with our reactors. Uh, I did want to note that I think the, like, idea of the new kind of, like, set farms for reactors is a good one. However, it's currently overlapping with the, like, weekly reactor farms where now... Uh, you are getting basically half as many reactors as the ones that you actually want. So like before, if you went to a weekly reactor farm, all the reactors that would be dropping would be 100% guaranteed to be, if I was looking for a toxic tech reactor, it would be 100% guaranteed to be toxic tech reactors. Now, um, if you're farming and you're, that toxic tech farm overlaps with a dedicated farm, now half of the reactors are dropping with toxic tech and half of them are dropping with like non-attribute fusion, which is something that I don't care about if I'm just looking for Freyna. So I think there needs to be some sort of implementation or change where the weekly farms are still weekly and can rotate and change around, and the dedicated farms are separate from them, that they don't overlap. I think there's a way to have both systems, and I think that would be really nice, but right now the change to like the dedicated is making reactor farming worse, in my opinion, than actually better. Um, so just something to look at. Obviously, everything's going to change when you can just implant whatever you want. But it sounds like you're still going to want to find a good reactor with the base types and a good first weapon or like something that's generally usable so that you can have all three like good weapons uh, on it. So I, I still think you're going to do some reactor farming even when this comes out. And so hopefully they can implement some changes to that to make that even better. They also said that they have various quality of life improvements and ultimate weapon revamps in the works. Um, looking at you, Fallen Hope, looking at you, Smithereens, uh, would love to see those weapons buffed. Uh, the two pistols, the last dagger especially, would love to see those weapons have like an actual cool role uh, to play in the game. Uh, would love to see some assault rifle buffs. The Divine Punishment is such a cool weapon. Please make it good. Um, Excava, still a cool weapon. Still booty cheeks. Uh, and honestly, if you're going to be looking at ultimate weapon revamps, I would take a look at the um, new weapon, the Frost Watcher, because honestly, it's not very good. Um, I will have a video out on that hopefully tomorrow. Um, but yeah, that weapon is also very conditionally good or like good in theory, but not all that great uh, when it really comes down to the brass tacks of things. Um, and then lastly, they say that on Thursday, October 24th, we'll be rolling out the primary account setup feature on our official website. If you play the first descendant on multiple platforms and have linked your Nexon account, this feature will allow you to set up and change the primary account on the official website and play the game with this set primary account. We'll provide more details in another announcement on Thursday, October 24th, which is in a few days. Then on Wednesday, October 30th, the much requested rename game account feature will become available, which will be announced in a separate announcement. The dev 
team uh, will be listening to your feedback and will be giving uh, our all to make the first Descendant even more enjoyable to play. We sincerely appreciate your continued interest and valuable feedback, and we'll continue to make progress step by step to meet your expectations. So please look forward to it. W, once again, the devs really pulling out all the stops. Uh, they have been crushing it. Uh, so good changes there. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will catch y'all in the next one, guys. Take care. Peace.